Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to Lucy, the Eternity She Wished For. This is part 9. I don't know how long I've been running for. I no longer see anyone following behind me. I let go of Lucy's arm and catch my breath. I know that Korean is not the original language, and I'm, I'm not going to switch it to Korean just for the sake of continuity. Lucy herself doesn't appear to be too worn out. She takes out a handkerchief and carefully wipes out my forehead. She's always so well prepared. The handkerchief is giving off Lucy's scent. That is, the fragrance of her perfume. I try to divert my attention away from it. Ah, I'm so tired! She sounds worried. Ugh. It feels as if I've just run a marathon. I can't believe I'm already this exhausted from running a few meters. It's proof that I'm out of shape. It can't be helped because I'm not very athletic in the first place. I just sit around in the shades during gym classes anyway. I take some time to catch my breath. I start to feel better after a few moments. Master? What is it? Is that true? Because I read an article recently that uh, sudden bursts of hard exercise is just as good as like a gradual exercise. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe that article is fallacious, I don't know. You never know with science these days. Why exactly do you think I ran away in the first place? What? You. It was because of you. I wonder where she's even finding this sort of information. If she has a favorites feature, I would like to update it for her. Say. Hi? Did you know? You could probably pass off as an actual person if you just remove the code on your stomach and that strange thing on your ear. Yeah. So long as you stop being so weird. <laughs> I, I just thought of something funny. I come up with a small lie to make her stop pouting. I'm surprised that she hasn't realized it herself. Speaking of which, can't you take off that thing, whatever it is on your ear? That's what I figured. It'd be problematic if there wasn't a way to tell humans and androids apart. Imagine robots like Lucy running amok in our society. There would be mass confusion and chaos. What is it? You want to stop by somewhere? A part-time pay? What do you mean? You work somewhere? A shop? You can't be talking about that place with the weird guy. By weird, she knew exactly who I was referring to. Let's have a moment of silence for the repairman. Why would you bother working in the first place? I want to ask you something. What my father said about paying the bills. That's still on your mind, isn't it? What are you, a politician? 
I won't get angry, so be honest. Are you an idiot? That doesn't apply to you. I'm just trying to knock some sense into you. It's the same logic as hitting an old television to make it work. That's because you keep telling me all these stupid things. My father was just saying that on a whim. Why would you even care about something like that? He was just making excuses to yell at us. Don't you know about Leon Festinger's theory of cognitive dissonance? Actually, I do. I can never get used to how fast she can search anything on the go. So yeah, what my father has been saying is not necessarily the truth. It's just his emotions getting the better of him. What I'm trying to say is that the ele electricity bills is actually none of our concern. Yeah. Lucy lets out a small sigh. So don't sweat the small stuff. There's no need for you to get a job. Even though I'm telling you not to? This robot refuses to listen to its master. If she really wanted to help me, the least she could do is obey. Ugh, so annoying. Go do whatever you want then. I spit out the words as I move along. When we walked into the shop, the owner was already busy with another guest. Welcome! Oh, it's you again? I can see that you treat your customers well, as usual. Why don't you pay up if you want some sort of special treatment? Oh, who is this edgelord? My god! Looks like Adam Jensen. I should get going now. But you just got here! Let's have a drink after I'm done. I have some business to take care of, so maybe next time. I guess it can't be helped. Alright, see you later then. The man never once took his eyes off Lucy until he left. After making sure that he was gone, I asked the repairman a question. Who was that? A friend of mine who runs a robot shop in another town. He's planning to expand his business here, so he was asking if I'd be willing to work for him. That's good. Congratulations on becoming a professional engineer. What's next, building a dispenser? I wonder if that's a liberty in translation. Haha, <laughs> very funny kid. Who said I accepted? I'm not giving up this quiet, relaxing life just yet. You can have this. He tosses me a sheet of paper that reads, RobotShopZero.net, new location, grand opening. In a futuristic mechanical font. What's this? A flyer? It's from my guy you just saw. When I look at you, I can sort of see your future, you know? You look like you'll probably end up unemployed or homeless when you grow up. That's why I'm looking out for you, kid. Keep that flyer and tell the guy that I send you if you ever need a job. Aren't you grateful? Oh, a binary choice. Oh, let's get the coin out. That's a heads. We're appeasing the man. Thank you. I'll use it if I ever run out of toilet paper. Come on, just try calling him. Maybe we'll get some parts for cheap, who knows? It doesn't seem like I'll ever need it, but I decided to keep it for now.
Hey, achievements! Butterfly effect. I just realized that's what it said. So I'm guessing the choices are going to be more meaningful about now. The repairman is performing a, ma a routine maintenance on Lucy. I've been sitting here for around half an hour, listening to the two chatter away. They seem to have agreed on trading Lucy's part-time pay for her regular maintenance. Shortly after, the session's finished. With no other business, we decide to head back. On the way out, I casually toss the repairman a question. It's the same one I'd asked Dr. Gears. Do you believe that robots have feelings? Huh? He gives me a blank stare. It forms into a serious look. Why do you ask? No reason. It just came to me. He continues to stare at me for a while. Like he's trying to read my mind. He looks as if he understands what I'm thinking. Well, since you've been spending so much time with Lucy, I suppose I understand why you'd be perplexed. It's natural that you'd be wondering about that. So, what do you think? Do androids have feelings? They're imitations. Imitations? Not the real deal. Lucy's feelings are not genuine. She's a little different from other androids. She can do almost everything a real person can do. Thinking and experience on her, experiencing on her own, then reacting. Getting angry, sad, or happy. But in the end, they're nothing but imitations. It'd be inaccurate to say that they're her own true feelings. But at the same time, she's extremely close to the real thing. She's a fake piece of diamond that even professionals can't tell apart. A near-perfect replica. But real diamonds have an astronomically high value. On the other hand, a fake one wouldn't, won't ever surpass the value of a genuine, no matter how close the real thing it may be. What do you think about Lucy? What do you mean? While watching her, while watching what she's been doing, I want to know what you've been thinking. Compared to a real person, how does it feel to be with a fake? How does the Lucy you know compare to a real woman? I... I don't know. I'm asking him because I don't know. Not that I'm familiar with how a proper woman acts, anyway. Well, whether we want to concern yourself with it or not, that's your choice. It's not something I can decide for you. Well... I mull over a few things on the way home. Within me, logic is clashing with emotion. My brain is a mess. She's not a human, but an android. This is what I need to focus on. The mystery behind an android's feelings. The difference between man and android. Let's say that a certain god created humans. It doesn't matter which one. The Allah, the Lord, the Buddha. Any of the countless Hindu or Japanese deities, it doesn't matter. I'd also like to make it clear that I'm not here to debate between creationism and evolution. Whoever created humans and other creatures, whoever created the earth and the universe, whatever our origin, let us refer to it as God. God created man. Then man created robots. Man was made from DNA that God created. And robots are made from an algorithm program that man created. Now let's try asking ourselves, what if the robot algorithms match how human brains work? What if robots are capable of acting or feeling the same way we do? Then could you really still des designate them as fake? As you watch them act just like real people, would you be able to convince yourself that they're not human? And if they're fakes, who's to say we ourselves are genuine? What is real? What is not? What are the standards? Someone once said that people will see only what they want to see, and people build a world with only what they can, can see. It might have been Schopenhauer. Anyway, since we know nothing about the far outreaches of the universe, we cannot conclude that we, humans, are real. This is getting me nowhere. <laughs> I'm just running around in circles. It's making my head spin. Barring religious beliefs, it's also scary to think about what might be waiting for us out there. I grip my head tightly in frustration. No matter how hard I try, a clear conclusion eludes me. But one thing's for certain. Something deeply rooted inside of me. 
Something inside me is about to change. God, this is just like my philosophy class. We ask the big questions. And once again, with the laws of robotics. There hasn't been any harm to humans yet, other than the infamous slap. <sighs> and all of the protag protagonist's orders have been to do whatever you want, or, you know, along those lines. Alright, so this is October 19th. At the end of this day, I will be stopping the recording. So I'm sorry, but it's going to be incomplete. And I'm sorry if my voice sounds different. Uh, I've got new headphones that isolate more, and uh, something going on with my throat. As usual, Lucy is waiting for me outside. Something as simple as this is enough to put me at ease. It's something I don't want to admit. It was the same as ever. Boring classes, lunch, more boring classes. Then I came home. Nothing out of the ordinary. I'm doing all right. My grades have always been pretty good, actually. I don't need your concern. <laughs> what good would come from out of relying on you? I brush her aside and enter the house. What's with this angelic background? And her juxtapose, or blending into it, I should say. My body has been feeling heavier lately. I don't feel too good. Maybe it's because it's starting to get cold. I decide to take a shower first. I let the warm water what water? Rotter? I let the warm water run all over all over my frozen body. It feels really good. Oof. After taking a light shower, I step out of the bathtub. Then I wrap a towel around myself. At that moment, I feel someone's presence at the door. Lucy suddenly reveals herself. Ah! I fall backwards in surprise. I grip my towel tightly to make sure it doesn't come off. Master? Are you really that concerned about an android seeing your junk? Says the clueless perpetrator. Hey! Who gave you the permission to barge in here? Shouldn't that etiquette be programmed into you? Someone must have considered it in the uh, planning stages. I was taking a shower! All I'm wearing is a towel. What, what kind of person? I stop as I finally come to a realization. She's a robot. And I'm a human being. It's natural that there wouldn't be any problems. It would be what people might consider normal. But I can no longer make that kind of distinction. I've become unable to make such simple judgments. It's nothing. How foreboding. Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, so you can get out now. It was at that moment. When her forehead suddenly came into contact with mine. I had no time to react. Before I knew it, Lucy's face had ended up mere inches away from my nose. What? I frantically back away in order to create some space between us. What do you think you're doing? Hmm. 
That startled me. I can feel my heart beating a little faster. Don't put your forehead against me so suddenly like that. You surprised me. Yeah. It's because... I find it difficult to explain. This damn robot. Could it be she already knows why I was so shocked? It's because your skin's too cold. What? Is that true? I haven't noticed myself. Anyway, that still doesn't explain why you touched my forehead. Is that like a thermometer? Silveroid. The type of robot specifically designed to assist the elderly. Oh, okay. Thanks for the uh, clarification there. <laughs> I thought it was a tool. I hear they're referred to as silveroids. Why did the music stop? Is something drastic gonna happen? Oh, there we go. Not interested. I'm gonna put my clothes on, so just get out. I ignore her and continue pushing her outside. Then I shut the door. I hurriedly gather my clothes and, and put them on. Oof. I'm almost finished with my studies for the day. I check the time and realize it's getting pretty late. I look around the room, but Lucy is nowhere to be seen. What could she be doing? I start to get a little curious. I get up from my chair to go look for Lucy. Speak of the devil. At that very moment, Lucy enters my room. What were you doing? What could have possibly taken her so long? My curiosity is at its peak, but I hold back from questioning her further. Instead, I ask something else. By the way... How was it like when you were at the lab? Uh, did you get along with anyone there? I mean, there's also the android named Andrew, which she didn't mention. See, you keep saying that, but I need more explanation than that. I don't trust Lucy when she calls people nice. I wonder if she's ever insulted... Uh, uh, I wonder if she's ever insulted anyone in her, in her life. A doctor? Oh, nice. Gotta love the mustache. Hmm. Do you want to see him again? Do you want to spend more time with him? I see. She stops for a moment. Lucy 
後でもしマスターにとってルーシーが必要でなくなったらまた博士に会える機会があればその時は博士と一緒に暮らしたいです。So basically, he's your second choice. 保険ですね。<笑> But are you satisfied with that? He treated you better than I ever did, right? He knows a lot about robots too. And he'd probably be a better person to rely on with it whenever something happens. Wouldn't it be better for you to serve him as a master instead? What do you mean? I see. I felt that I was being silly to be able to find comfort in the words of a mere robot. I truly felt like an idiot. Oh, is this the end of the day? Ah,、uh, yeah, this is the end of the day. <laughs> Alrighty. Man, the plot is,、uh, is thickening, and I'm very sorry that I have to end it here. So, unfortunately, I will have to conclude this Let's Play.、Uh, thank you very much for watching if you watched, like,、uh, well, any of it. I'm glad that you're watching it. So, that was Lucy, the Eternity She Wished For. It is available on Steam and iOS for $10. Highly recommend that you pick it up. It deals with a lot of philosophical、uh, subjects, thought provoking subjects. The, the concept of, like, you know, are androids human or not is a very,、um, it's been done a lot, but I think that this VN presents it in a very modern and unique way. So I highly recommend that you pick it up if you can. Conclude the story for yourself, read it for yourself.、Um, yeah, totally recommend it. So, with that, thank you very much for watching. I will see you in another Let's Play. Toodaloo!